Brothers and sisters, we are now at Galatians chapter 2. We're now at Galatians chapter 2. We didn't quite make it to chapter 2 in the previous video. We started running a little long, so I decided to just cut it off after chapter 1. But since we're here at chapter 2, let's go ahead and just do a quick recap of what we reviewed in chapter 1, just in case you forgot. So these are what you see on our screen are the notes that we took when we went through chapter 1 of Galatians. And as you can see in the middle column, what we learned as we went through the first chapter of Galatians was we learned that Galatians was written unto the churches of Galatia. And we also learned that within chapter one, that someone was preaching another gospel. We didn't yet learn who was preaching another gospel, nor did we learn what this other gospel was. And we also learned that these people that were preaching another gospel, that they were troubling the followers of Hamashiach. And lastly, we also learned that the apostle Paul, or Shaul, told us about the traditions of his fathers, and that this is where we did our homework, and we went to find out what the traditions of the apostle Shaul's, or Paul's, fathers was. And uh, I believe it was in the, the book of John, chapter 1, we learned that the apostle Paul was a Pharisee. He said, he was a Pharisee, and he was the son of a Pharisee. So based off of that, we then went to look at the doctrine of the Pharisees. When we looked at the doctrine of the Pharisees, we looked at the words of Christ. And so Christ, in Mark chapter 7, verse 6, and also in uh, the book of Matthews, Christ tells us that the Pharisees were teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And according to Christ, he said that they full well rejected the commandment of Yah, that they may keep their own commandment or their own tradition. So based off of that, we began to build out our understanding of the Pharisees that the Apostle Paul alluded to in chapter one. So as we read, as we go through chapter two of Galatia, we're going to look for a confirmation that, in fact, the Apostle Paul or Shaul was referring to the Pharisees. OK, and I'm also going to flip over. I'm going to flip back and forth between my web browser and uh, my notes here. But let's um, let me just show you what we're talking about here in chapter one. So in chapter one, verse 14, and this is one of the scriptures where we where we also pointed out that the uh, traditional um, Roman Christian belief is when we get to verses like chapter 14 and we see uh, phrases like the Jews religion, there was an assumption that was being made that the Jews religion was referring to the followers of Torah. However, what we also pointed out was that the Israelites believe contrary to, to that. And it has to do with uh, verse 14 where uh, in verse 14 it reads, and profited in the Jews' religion, which is a, a new word. It was Strong's 2454. Now, 2454 is only found in the book of Galatians in chapter 1. So this was a new phrase, but it was interpreted as the Jews' religion. What we pointed out was that the Israelites, when they read verse 14, which reads, and profited in the Jews' religion, above many my equal in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So what we did was that we showed that the Jews' religion was associated with the traditions of the Apostle Paul's, Shaul's fathers. And this is what led us to begin researching the traditions of Paul's fathers, and it pointed us to the traditions of the Pharisees. Okay? That's where we learn about the Pharisees not keeping the commandments of Yah. Instead, they were followers of the commandment of men. All right. Okay. All right. So now that we have that, um, so let's just review one quick scripture before we get started. And this is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this is actually just one of those, those sound bites that we were reviewed in, in the first video. But this is just a, another sound bite to add to that list. And I'm sure if you've uh, been around in Christian circles enough, you may have heard this, um, this Bible verse. Uh, referenced and it goes or it reads study to show thyself approved unto Yah a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth 
All right, so I wanted to read this just so that we all understand that when we read the book of Galatians, we have to study to show ourselves approved and search for the truth in the scriptures. OK, and just for um, for FYI, I'm going to keep reading because very few keep reading um, past verse 15. But let's read. It says verse uh, 16, it says, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is, is past already and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yah standeth sure, having this seal. Elohim knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from lawlessness. Just know that whenever you're reading or if someone reads uh, or quotes, I should say, Second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse 15 to study to show thyself approved. Just know that if you read a little bit further down, it also also tells the reader to depart from lawlessness. All right. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to depart from lawlessness. All right. So that's enough. Let's go ahead and get started into Galatians chapter two. I'm actually excited about this chapter. Uh, there's a lot of information in chapter two and even more in chapter three but let's see if we can uh make it through chapter two in this video okay all right so here we are hopefully you can see on the screen galatians chapter two and it reads verse one it says then 14 years after i went up again to jerusalem with barnabas and took titus with me also and i went up by revelation and communication unto them that gospel which i preached among the gentiles but privately to them which were of reputation least by any means i should run or had run in vain verse three but neither titus who was with me being a greek was compelled to be circumcised all right so let's take a pause here uh we're going to grab this uh quote here and want to add it to our notes verse three where it says uh but neither titus who was with me was compelled to be circumcised. The reason why we're grabbing this is that this plays a part in us being able to identify who was on the scene in Galatians. Okay, so this helps us identify who was on the scene in Galatians. And you'll see that once we make it through uh, chapter two. All right, so uh, let's see here. Oh, actually, I already have a couple of um, key points already filled out here. So as you can see, the first bullet point says Titus, who was with me, uh, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. All right. So let's flip back over to our, our reading. And if we go to verse uh, four. All right. So here's where things get interesting. And verse four reads, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty. All right. So here's another proverbial fork in the road, right? Because I've seen a couple of teachings on this and I've seen uh, some Roman Christian pastors get to this point in Galatians and say, aha, to spy out our liberty, this is the liberty to break the commandments of the Most High. But let's see if that's true. And we're going to use Galatians to um, identify this liberty or to help explain what we can or cannot do with this liberty um, that's identified in the second chapter of Galatians. So let me just read it one more time, and then we're going to go do our research on uh, liberty here. So let's see. Verse 4 reads again, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty. All right, so let's stop right here. Let's jump over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. I believe it's 13. All right. So on the screen here, I want to go up to 13. And remember, we're talking about the liberty, right? So our chapter 2 talked about the liberty, but chapter 5, verse 13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. <laughs> so as you can see, we're still talking about the same thing, right? So let's read it again. It says, For brethren, ye have been called, ye have been called unto liberty. Now I'm just going to jump back over to chapter 2 just so that you can see 
uh, verse 4 says, And because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty. All right, so back over to chapter 5, it says, verse 13, it says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Now listen up, it says, Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Let me read it again, it says, uh, only use not liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Now, on this, on your screen, I'm going to highlight uh, verse 19. And I'm just going to jump down to 19 where it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. I'm going to go back up to 13. It says, Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. You understand? So it says, in verse 13, it says, don't use the liberty to do these flesh, these things of the flesh. And then in verse 19, it lists out the works or the things of the flesh, which you should not do. Right? You understand? So let's do it one more time. Verse 13, it says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Jump down to 19, it says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? And we're going to read it, it says, adultery, well, that's breaking the law. Fornication, that's breaking the law. Uncleanness, breaking the law. Lasciviousness, that's breaking the law. Idolatry, this is breaking the law. Witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such alike. Which means there's there's more than what's listed on this screen. Okay? And it says, and let's keep reading. It says, verse 21, it says, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. And such alike of that which I tell you before, as I have told you in the past, which means I told you this before right and he says that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah you understand all right so what we learned here was that this liberty which is we see this liberty in in verse 13 where it says for brethren ye have been called unto Liberty. And then Apostle Paul or Shaul also says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So don't do these fleshy things. And then verse 19 lists out the works of the flesh that you should not do, which happens to be breaking the laws of the Most High. As we read, now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. This is verse 19. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. All right, and you can go on, go on down the list here as it lists out these uh, laws that are broken. Okay? So, based on these liberties, we know that it's not talking about a liberty to break the most highest laws. Or, put in another way, a liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Okay? All right, so let's go back over to Galatians chapter 2, and we're at verse 4. So now when we come up to this liberty, verse 4, we know that it's not talking about breaking the most highest laws because of what we just read in Galatians chapter 5, which says, use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. The works of the flesh are these. Got it? All right. All right, so let's uh, pick up where we left off in uh, verse 4, where it says, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty all right we got that which we have in Christ Yahshua or Yahshua HaMashiach that they might bring us into bondage all right so let's take a, a pause here and let's understand bondage let's understand what what brings someone into bondage right so another word for bondage is captivity. So and the reason why I say that is let's jump over to Romans chapter 7 to read about bondage and to understand what brings us into bondage. 
Is it the Most High's laws that brings us into bondage, or is it something else? All right, so for that, let's go over to Romans chapter 7, and I'm going to scroll down to, let's see, okay, let's start at verse uh, 22. So again, uh, let's see what the Apostle Paul says. It says, verse 22, it says, for I delight in the law of Yah after the inward man, hallelujah. So we see that he delights in the law of Yah. Not done away with, right? This is in Romans. Now, let's read verse 23, and it says, But I see another law. Uh-oh. So it looks like we have more than one law, right? Now, I think that also adds to the confusion where folks assume that there's just one law, and they don't recognize that there are there's more than one law. But if we read in 20, verse 23, it says, But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity or another word of saying captivity is bondage right and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members verse 24 O wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death verse uh, 25 it says I thank Yah through Yahshua HaMashiach. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of Yah, which is what we're trying to do, right? So with my mind, I, I myself serve the law of Yah, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now I have, and just in case you're thinking that, well, maybe this is talking metaphorical. Let's put that to the test. Let's keep reading. Let's drop down to Romans 8, verse 1. And we have that on the screen, so you should see it there. It reads, uh, verse 1, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach. All right, I'm going to highlight this on the screen, all right? Because this too is a soundbite. Um, you know, growing up in a Christian church, uh, for many, many years, um, I don't know about you, but I've heard this over and over again, and I, I totally believe it, right? And hopefully you do too. But what I want to point out is that what's often given as a soundbite is just the first part of this verse, right? Normally, uh, folks don't aren't aware of what comes after the comma here in the King James. So let's look at that. It says, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach. And the very next word says, who? Now, this is important because this is a qualifier. In other words, it means there's no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach who do these things. Okay, so we're going to look at this qualifier to see what is required of someone so that they won't have any condemnation, right? And it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <laughs> Let me read that again. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Remember, we just read that in Galatians chapter five, right? So let's hop over to Galatians chapter five. Let me jump up to verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, right? It's saying the same thing in Romans. Let's go over to, uh, back over to Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 1, where it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, right? So back over to Galatians chapter 5, and it says, chapter verse 13, Use, for brethren, we have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh right saying the same thing and go down if you drop down to the 19 remember we read this it says for the works of the flesh are manifest which are these right back over to romans chapter 8 uh it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ yahshua who walk not after the flesh, 
jump over to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. All right? And then it lists out adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, and all these other um, things of the law uh, which we shouldn't break, right? So according to Romans, we should not be walking after the flesh, which we saw in Galatians, walking after the flesh is breaking the most high's laws, right? Hopefully you can see that, right? Because it says, who walk not after the flesh. So you're not supposed to do these things of the flesh. And in Galatians chapter 5 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. All right. So hopefully you got that. Um, but let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. There's a lot of inf good information here. It says, but after the spirit, uh, verse 2 says, for the law, for the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we have, notice here we have two laws, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, it says, For the law, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemneth, condemned sin in the flesh. All right, let's go down to 4. Now, this is another, good, another important one. Verse 4 says, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Very important. Notice the qualifier after the word us. It says who. <laughs> so again, you have to do something to have the righteousness of the law fulfilled in you. Right? So let's read it again from the top. Verse 14 in Romans 8. I'm sorry. Not verse 14 but verse 4 so Romans 8 verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us comma who so you got to do something and it tells you who walk not after the flesh jump over to Galatians 5 verse 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these all right Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. You got it, right? All right, all right. So uh, let's see, but there's there's a lot more here. So we got that on verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans is Romans 8. Verse 5 says, oh, this is important, guys. Listen to this. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. In other words, they that are after the flesh do the things of the flesh. Then it says, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Oh, now listen to verse 6. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Oh, listen to 7. It says, for the, car for the carnal mind is enmity, or hatred against Yah. Oh, listen, it says, for it is not subject to the law of Yah, neither can it be. Oh, wow. So in verse 7, it says, the, you know, carnally minded, right? In the verse 6, it actually says, the, for to be carnally minded is death. So that's a bad thing, right? Yeah, right. So in verse 7, then in verse 7, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity or hatred against Yah. And it tells you why it's hatred against Yah. It says, for it is not subject to the law of Yah. So when you're, you have a carnal mind, you're going to fight against embracing the laws of Yah. And that is a dangerous place to be. All right. And, uh, and also, let's finish up with verse 8. It says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. All right? So hopefully you can see the importance of keeping the commandments of the Most High. All right? And why this doctrine of lawlessness is a dangerous doctrine. All right. So 
let's do a recap. I know we've probably covered a lot in just a few verses, but let's just do a, a quick recap um, of where we are. All right, so I'm going to pull up my notes again, and we're just going to keep going through this until we, we can memorize it. So in chapter 1, we learned that Galatians was written unto the churches. It was uh, someone came preaching another gospel. These people that came in, were um, they were troubling the believers. Uh, and then the apostle Shaul uh, also pointed out that this had to do with the Jews' traditions, which was, a, which was the traditions of his fathers, which we found out was the traditions of the Pharisees. And according to Christ, Christ said that the Pharisees didn't did not teach the commandments of Yah. Instead, they taught the traditions, the commandments of men. All right. All right. And then um, in chapter two, we start off chapter two by finding out that Titus was not compelled to be circumcised. And that was key. And they also learned that someone came in privily to spy out their liberty. And we did our research and found out that the liberty was not used as an occasion to the flesh. And the, the occasion to the flesh was breaking the commandments or the laws of the Most High. So it basically said, use not liberty to break the laws of Yah. All right. OK. All right. So now that we've gotten that review out of the way, um, let's go back over to Galatians chapter two. And verse two says, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Uh, verse 4 says, And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Yahshua HaMashiach, that they might bring us into bondage. All right, we read about that. Verse 5, it says, To whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour. And that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. All right. So I just want to pause here and just let you know that at this point, I've seen video teachings where at this point they have Paul. They would uh, the teachers would have you to believe that Paul, through the, the commandments and the laws of Yah um, in the garbage can, and that he was living a lawless, uh, trouble free life. And what you're saying here as we go through this reading is that that's not the case and that. If you follow the precepts, you'll find out that the Apostle Paul was not teaching lawlessness in this chapter. But let's keep going. Let's um, continue with verse 6. It says, verse 6 says, but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever, or yeah, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Yah accepted no man's person, for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Here we go. Let's keep reading. Verse, uh, verse 8 reads, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Verse 9 says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. All right. So we keep reading. It says only verse 10. It says only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forwarded to do. Verse 11, it says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, now this is key, we're going to take our time with this one, right? Because what we um, pointed out at the beginning of the video was that you may not know that in this part of Galatians, this uh, event that we're reading in, in Galatians is also covered in the book of Acts. So what we're going to do, we're going to read up to a certain point in uh, Galatians and then we're going to read up to a certain point in Galatians, and then we're going to read the same thing in Acts. And once we read the same thing in Acts, we're going to ask the question, does the Apostle Paul throw the most highest laws away in Galatians 2? And you can answer the question for yourself after, you, after we read both of them, because I can tell you that on teachings of this, what I've seen is that when Roman Christians, pastors teach 
uh, this part of Galatians, they only read the version of this event in Galatians, and they purposely stay away from, or at least this is my belief, they purposely stay away from this event in Acts because Acts will, it'll give you trouble if you want to say that this part of Galatians is teaching lawlessness. All right. So you'll see when we get there and we're going to ask the question, does this teach lawlessness? And you'll be able to answer that after we read both teachings of this event in Galatians and we'll read this in Acts. All right. OK. All right. So I um, want to go back up to uh, So we left off at verse 11 where it says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to blame. All right. So let me make sure we have this in our notes because this is a key point. Yep. So in our chapter two notes, I have Peter was come to Antioch and I withstood him to the face because he was to blame. All right. So Peter was to blame for what's about to happen, or at least from the Apostle Paul or Shaul's point of view. All right. So verse 12, you know, we keep reading to get some more understanding of what's going on. And verse 12 says, for before, you know, before Peter came, that certain came from James. So we know that certain came from James. So this is key, too, because when we read this in Acts, we're going to see who <laughs> came from James. Um, so but in in the Galatians, it only says that certain came from James. So we don't yet have enough information to know who came from James. But it says certain came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, let's, it says he withdrew and separated himself. All right. So what did uh, what did Peter do? Did he eat pork, shrimp, cra crabs and lobsters? No, he didn't. He withdrew and separated himself. So we're going to look for this behavior of Peter in Acts, right? So uh, we captured, I believe we captured that. Yep, we said Pete, uh, Peter withdrew and separated himself. And actually, let me see if I can clean this up a little bit because it looks like some of these aren't related, but they are actually related. So, uh, so yep, so when Peter came, he withdrew and separated himself, all right? Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Uh, verse 13 reads, And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away, was carried away with their disassimulation. All right. Uh, verse 14. Now it says, But when I saw that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, Let's pause right there. How did Paul know that Peter was not walking upright according to the truth of the gospel? The answer is above up here where it says because he withdrew and separated himself. So right now we don't know how, how or why that would tell Paul that he's not walking upright according to the truth of the gospel. But let's wait until we get over to Acts to see if we can clear this, this up, okay? All right, so uh, verse 14, where it says, um, let me start at the beginning, it says, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, this, listen up, If thou being a Jew, Livest after the manner of the Gentiles, mm, okay, and not as do the Jews. All right, so here we are. We're going to look at this on um, Bible Hub, so we can take a look at these Greek words actually behind these English words. So uh, let's see. And verse thirteen it says, "And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him." insomuch that Barnabas was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not unrightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, and I'm going to highlight this so that you can see it, uh, 2453, Jewish, a Jew, 2453, livest after the manner of Gentiles 
and not as do the Jews. 2452. So this is 2452. Why compel us the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? 2450. So, uh, so the takeaway here is that let's look at both of these. It says, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews. So I'm going to click on here so we can take a look at Strong's 2452. Notice that this is in the Bible one time, and it's in Galatians one time. So, in other words, this is a new word. So we have to use the scriptures to tell us what this new word is, right? And likewise, if we click on this one, this is 2450. If I click on 2450, and you'll also see that this is in the Bible one time. So what that means is that Whenever we come across these new words, we have to just do a, a bit more homework to find out what these new words are. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I think what most people do is that when they come up, when they get to this phrase, they're thinking that this word Jews is the same as the Jews as uh, 2453. It says, if thou being a Jew, which is 2453. So when you come to latter part of verse 14 most people assume that it's the same Jews but instead it's 2452 and likewise it's also 2450 all right and so this is actually and if 2450 is actually a good a better description where it says to Judaize um, so I've heard uh, some people say a Judaizer so this is a Judaizer so it's not a Jew which is 2453 this is a Judaizer Okay, all right. So, but let's let's uh, let's confirm. We always like to cross check our findings, right? So we always always like to cross check our findings. So to do that, we're going to keep reading, and we're going to let's just keep reading, and then once we get to a, a good stopping point, we're going to flip over to the Book of Acts. All right. So um, because I've I've also seen pastors use this to say, hey. If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and they say, aha, you see, brother? So the um, uh, Apostle Peter threw away the, this, this is saying the Apostle Peter threw away the Most High's laws and that he was living like a heathen. It doesn't say that. It says, livest after the manner of the Gentiles. And at this point, we don't know what exactly Peter was doing. But what we're saying is that just wait until we get over to the book of Acts and then you can make up your mind. All right. All right. So let's uh, keep reading. And like I said, we're going to get to a good stopping point, And then we're going to jump over to Galatians and see if we can clear this part of the scriptures up. All right. So uh, go on to verse 15. Well, actually, let me start back at verse 14, 14, where it says, but when, but when I saw that they walk not unrightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews or the Judaizers? And we keep reading verse 15. It says, we who are Jews by nature and not the sinners of the Gentiles. All right, listen. This is where we want to get to here. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahshua HaMashiach. And I'm just going to read the rest of 16, but we're going to come back to the top of 16. It says, even we have believed in Yahshua HaMashiach that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. All right. So in verse 16, let's point out a few things. You see this, this phrase here that says works of the law? All right. So this too, you know, it's a relatively new phrase. This phrase is not in the Old Testament. Let me say that again. This phrase, works of the law, 
is not in the Old Testament. This is a New Testament phrase. And it's actually only in the in the Bible three times. It's in the it's in Galatians and then it's in Romans, the book of Romans, once. And they're both referring to the same thing. So one of the forks in the road is that when Roman Christian pastors get to the works of the law, they assume that the works of the law is referring to Torah. All right. But what we're going to do, we're going to read the same uh, event in Acts and we're going to see exactly what the works of the law refers to. OK. All right. And we'll also see if the works of the law, what it has to do with Judaizers in verse 14. All right. We we'll see what it has to do with Judaizers. All right. OK. So let's remind ourselves what we just read. So verse 16, it says, knowing that a man is not justified or saved by the works of the law okay so this is what chapter 2 verse 16 is talking about so now let's go over to we're going to go over to the book of acts and this is where things get interesting so we're going to go over to the book of acts and read about the same event in the book of acts so i'm going to start a little bit above where we're going to um uh, do our comparison. But I'm going to go above, let's see, start above it in Acts chapter 14, verse 28. And let's see here. All right. So I started here just so that you can see that they're in the same place where it says um, in verse 26, it says, and then sailed to Antioch, right? So we, we read that in our um, uh, in Galatians. Let me see. Did we capture that anywhere in our notes? Yeah. So chapter two, Galatians chapter two. So remember, it says uh, Peter was come to Antioch, right? So this is in Galatians chapter two. That was one of the notes that we captured. So Galatians just want to just want to point out that this event in Galatians takes place in in Antioch. All right. So in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 14, I just wanted you to see that this is picking up in Ant Antioch. And it's getting ready to go into the same event in Galatians. And it says, and thence, uh, I'm sorry, verse 26, it says, and, and thence sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of Yah for the work which they fulfilled. Verse 27, it says, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, remember, uh, let's look at our notes for Galatians. And remember, Galatians was written unto the churches of Galatians, right? So uh, that's, you can see that in our notes. I have it highlighted here. So Galatians was written unto the churches of Galatia. So let's go back over to Acts, verse uh, 27. It says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that Yah had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. All right. So now here we go. We're going to go over to the next chapter. And this is where things get a little interesting in the event that we read in Galatians. Because now we're going to get a, a different perspective on what we just read. All right. So Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And it said, And certain men came down from Judea. Stop. <laughs> Let's go over to our notes because we read this in Galatians. However, it was it read differently where it said, let's see, in Galatians chapter two, it said, and certain came down from James. So certain men. So in Galatians, it said certain men or certain came down from James. But in the book of Acts, it says and certain men came down from Judea. Right. So and as we read here, we're going to see that these certain men in Judea were with James. <laughs> So let's keep reading. It says, what did they do? They said, they taught the brethren and said, let's listen closely. It says, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. All right, brothers and sisters, what does it say? The, these men that came down from Judea were teaching, except a man be circumcised, after the manner of Moses, they can or ye, you cannot be saved or another word for saved is justified. Right. So 
now we know who came down, or sorry, now we know that what these brothers that came down from James or Judea were preaching. Now let's point out the fact that this doctrine is not Torah, right? This is not the teachings of Moses. Let's keep reading to see whose teaching this was, that you had to be circumcised to be saved, right? So that was not Torah. This was a twisting of the Old, Old Testament doctrine. And if we keep reading, it says, let's see, I'll make sure I got, I captured this in our notes. Uh, works. Yeah. Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. All right. Capture that. So let's keep reading. And it says, and actually, bear with me just for a moment. I'm going to get my other Bible on the same page. Uh, let's see here. All right. There we go. And bring it up to the top. All right. Um, 15, one again, it says, And certain men came down from Judea, taught, taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved or justified. All right. Let's keep reading. It says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas, right? We're reading about Paul and Barnabas in Galatians. It says, Had no small dissension, and disputation with them, all right, so they had an argument with them. It says, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So as you can see already in the book of um, Acts, we're getting a lot more information than we did in Galatians. So also, in this, at this point, we see that Paul and Barnabas had an argument with these guys that came down. And they said, and basically it got to the point where Paul and Barnabas said, you know what? Let's take it back to the apostles. And they said, all right, fine, fine. Let's take it back to the, prof to the apostles to settle this once and for all. So let's see what happened when they took this matter before the apostles. And let's keep reading. It says, uh, verse 3, it says, And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused... And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. All right. Uh, verse 4 it says, And when they were come to Jerusalem, okay, so they were arriving, it says, They were received of the church and of the apostles and of the and the elders, and they declared all the thing all the things that Yah had done with them. So they got there, they got a big greeting, right? Looks like the apostles and the elders there. And let's see, let's read verse 5. And it said, but there, listen, there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. All right. So now we know who's on the scene in Galatians. Let's keep reading. It says, saying that, that it was necessary to circumcise them. Uh-oh. So we know where it came from, right? And to command them to keep the law of Moses. Uh-oh. Let's keep reading, right? In the verse uh, one, it was to be saved. But here it just says that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. All right. So let's point out a few things about verse five. So first of all, we know that it was the Pharisees and this is lining up perfectly with Galatians. Why is it lining up with Galatians? Well, if we go over to our notepad, and we see that in uh, chapter one of Galatians, we saw that uh, the Apostle Paul, when he was referring to the Jews religion. Right. And it was, he said it was related to the um, traditions of his fathers. And so when we did our research, we found out our homework. We found out that the Paul said he was a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. So in Galatians chapter one, it was pointing to the doctrine of the Pharisees in chapter one. And that's where we went and we started looking at the doctrine of the Pharisees that, according to Christ, said that these Pharisees were teaching for doctrines the commandments of men and that they were rejecting the commandment of Yah, that they would keep their own tradition. All right. So over in Acts, we're now seeing that Acts is confirming what we suspected in Galatians 1. Why? Because... In Acts, it tells us that it was the Pharisees that were causing problems, right? It was the Pharisees that said, 
in verse 5, they were saying, but there rose up certain of the Pharisees would believe saying that it was needful to circumcise them, right? To be saved, right? And what, which is what verse 1 said, to be saved and to, to command them to keep the law of Moses. All right, so let's keep reading to say to see if it's saying to uh, throw away the commandments and laws of the Most High. We got to keep reading. All right, so let's. Uh, so now we know that the uh, breakdown of Galatians uh, Acts confirms the breakdown that we've just went through with Galatians with the Pharisees. Okay, all right. So let's keep reading. It says, uh, verse six. It says, and the apostles and the elders came together for a con to consider of this matter. Verse 7, it says, And when there had been much disputing, Peter, uh-oh, Peter rose up. Let's stop. Remember, we, we were reading about Peter in Galatians. So in Peter in Galatians in chapter 2, it says, Peter had come to Antioch and he was stood him to the face, right? Because he blamed Peter. So in Galatians, we see that Peter and Paul had words. And Paul was correcting Peter in Galatians. But let's see... And the, the reason why is because he saw Peter, uh, what did Peter do? He withdrew and separated himself, right? He withdrew and separated himself in the book of Galatians. So let's look to see what that means, see if we can find some additional information in Acts about what that actually meant, right? All right, so let's, uh, let me find my place again. And let's see here, that was verse 7. Let me move that up to the top of the screen. All right, so it says, verse 7, it says, And when there had been much disputing, so they were arguing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye, you know that a good while ago, Yah made choice among us, listen, it says, that the Gentiles, oh, so we, Read about the Gentiles in, in Galatians, right? It says, the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Verse 8, and Yah, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them Holy Ghost, or the Ruach, and even as he did unto us. All right, let's listen to see what happens next. This is very important. It says, and put no difference between us and them. Let's go. Remember, let's go back over to Galatians because I, I really want you to see this. In Galatians 2, this is where it says Peter withdrew and separated himself. So Peter with in Galatians, Peter withdrew and separated himself. And then him and Paul have words. But now we see in Acts, Peter, he's singing a different tune where Peter's saying, where it says in verse 9, it says, and uh, let me start at verse 8 and says, And Yah, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, or the Ruach, even as he did unto us, and put no difference. So there shouldn't, so according to the Most High, there was no difference between the Gentiles and these Jews, right? But in Galatians, Peter separating himself, saying there was a difference, right? So now you can see why Paul confronted Peter when he separated himself. But here's Peter telling us why there should not have been a separation, right? This is Peter telling us in Acts why there should not have been a separation or why, why there should not have been a difference. So Peter says in Acts 15, verse 8, he says, and Yah, which knowest the hearts, beareth, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, or the Ruach, even as he did unto us, and put no difference or separation between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. All right. So now we, we're getting a, a, some additional information as to the separation that, that was captured in Galatians 2. But let's keep reading. It says, now, therefore, why tempt ye Yah to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of Yahshua HaMashiach, we shall be saved. Now, that's verse 11. 
Now let's pause here for a moment and just point out that at this point in the book of Acts, we see that the apostle Paul fighting against the doctrine of the Pharisees. Let me say that again. In Acts, we see the apostle Paul fighting against the doctrine of the Pharisees. And instead saying that it is through the grace of Christ we shall be saved. And as a point of reference, when we take a look at the book of Galatians, which is describing the same event, and let's go over to Galatians uh, chapter 2, and let's look at verse 16. You should see it there on your screen. And it says, notice here it says, and I'm going to read verse 16. It says, knowing that a man is not justified or saved by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ Yahshua. All right. And let's see if you pick if you can pick it up. So in Galatians, in chapter 16, it's comparing being saved by Christ through faith versus being justified by the works of the law. Okay, that's what it says in Galatians, talking about the same event. However, when we go over to the book of Acts, it's comparing being saved by Christ versus the doctrine of the Pharisees. <laughs> All right, so what this is telling us, as it's describing the same event, this is telling us that the doctrine of the Pharisees is is called the works of the law in Galatians. You get it? So once again, in Galatians, it's this, it calls it the works of the law. However, in Acts, when it describes the same thing, it actually goes into detail and show you shows us or the readers that it is actually the doctrine of the Pharisees. All right. And I believe we captured this in our notes. Let me just make sure. All right. So if you look off to the left, I actually made some additional notes here off off screen. But what I did was in our keywords, um, you'll see an entry there for the works of the law. And what I have here is I want to point out that in Acts, uh, Acts describes the Acts describes the the doctrine of the Pharisees versus the faith of Christ. However, in Galatians, which describes the same event, it actually calls it the works of the law versus the faith of Christ. All right. So here we have a confirmation that the works of law is actually the doctrine of the Pharisees, which is, and if we look at the top entry here where it says uh, Pharisees in our key words, and what's the doctrine of the Pharisees? It's the teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men, full well rejecting the commandment of Yah. So that's who the Pharisees are and what they do. And just to stress again, we're seeing them in uh, the book of Acts, and they are in the book of Galatians. All right. Okay. All right. So now that we have that taken care of, let's see. Let me see if I can find our place again. And I believe we left off at verse, yeah, let's start off with verse 12. I'm going to read this in my book. I'm going to try to keep both screens in sync. Okay. So Acts verse 12, sorry, Acts chapter 15, verse 12 reads, then all the multitude kept silent and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, or Shaul, declaring what miracles and wonders Yah had brought had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Verse 13, and after they had held their peace, James, uh oh, listen up, answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. And so in other words, he's saying, Listen up. He says, Simon hath declared how Yah at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophet, as it is written. Verse 16, and bear with me for just for a moment, I'm going to advance the screen here. So verse 16 reads, After this 
I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Verse 17. That the residue of men might seek after Yah, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith Yah, who doeth all these things. Verse 18. Known unto Yah are all his works from the beginning of the world. Verse 19. All right, now let's pay attention here because verse 19, this is the beginning of explaining or this is the beginning of telling us whether or not the laws of the Most High are done away with. So this is key. So if you could just pay close attention from verse 19 onwards. All right. So let's go into 19. I'm going to read this slowly and we're going to um, read some precepts here. But let's read verse 19. It says, Wherefore, this is James giving his sentence. Listen, it says, Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles, listen, it says, are turned to Yah. All right, you get that? It says, read it again. It says, Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Yah. So the, one of the things I want to point out is that James is saying, let's not trouble these guys that are turned to Yah, right? So these, these Gentiles are already turned to Yah. And just for reference, let's get an idea of what it means to turn to Yah, right? Because we can actually find that in the Old Testament or find examples of that in the Old Testament. So on your screen, we're going to jump over to Deuteronomy 30, verse 10, and we're just going to do a, some research to figure out what does it mean to turn to Yah, right? Or turn to God, right? So turn to Yah. Here, so, okay, here we go. So verse 10 reads, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yah, thy Elohim, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto Yah, right, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off, all right? So we can see turning to Yah is to turn back to his commandments. However, let's read a little bit further because I, I just wanna, want us to get some additional understanding of what happens when one returns back to the commandments of the Most High. And it reads, let's go to ver uh, verse 12. It says, It is not in heaven that thou should have say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should have say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Right? And then it's verse, verse 14, it says, but the word, but the word, amen, hallelujah, the word is very nigh unto thee, and thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest, what? Do it. I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love Yah, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live, not die, right? That thou mayest live and multiply. And Yah shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. Amen and hallelujah. All right, so you see that's one of the, <laughs> read the uh, a little bit further on so that you can see the blessing associated with keeping the commandments of the Most High because this doctrine out there is, is actually uh, teaching lawlessness and trying to get uh, the believers to not keep the commandments of the Most High which which brings in a curse all right so anyway we, we came here to read um, what it means to turn to Yah so if we just refresh our uh, our reading here if we look at verse 10 again it says if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yah to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law and if thou 
Turn unto Yah, thy turn unto unto Yah with all thine heart and all thy soul. All right. So the takeaway here is to turn to Yah is to keep His commandments. When we saw that, when we read a little bit further down, this is an interesting one in Hosea. In Hosea chapter twelve, verse six. Um, let's see here. Verse six reads: Therefore, turn thou to Yah, keep mercy and judgment. And wait on Yah continually. All right. So hopefully you're getting an idea of what it means to turn to Yah. Right. It means to turn back to His laws, statutes, and commandments. But let's do, let's go back over to Acts 15 and let's see if we can find our fit, our place again. Okay. And we're at verse 19. And so let's read verse 19 again. It says, "Wherefore," and this is James giving his sentence. Right, he's giving the sentence of um, based on this discussion they had in Jerusalem, and with this dispute between Paul or the apostle Shaul and the Pharisees. So, just to remind that remind ourselves that the Pharisees were saying that these new believers or these Gentiles had to be circumcised and follow the laws of Moses to be saved or justified. Right, and that is a doctrine of the Pharisees, and we said that that is not Torah. That is not Torah. And Paul, Apostle Shaul, said, reminded us that you are we are saved through faith in Christ Yahshua. Okay? And after James heard this argument or this discussion, he's giving his final verdict. Right? And so we pick it up in verse 19 and it says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from a among the Gentiles, listen, it says, are turned to Yah. And we read about that in uh, Deuteronomy. So let's keep reading. It says, verse 20, but, here we go, but that we write unto them, okay, that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Hmm. Oh, that's a law. And from fornication. Uh, that's a law. And from things strangled. Uh, that's a law, too. Um, and from blood, and that's a law, all right? So at this point, we see James giving a final verdict, and keep in mind, James is there with the uh, with the other apostles, right? So James is there with Peter. We had Peter on the scene. Uh, James is there with um, the elders. It said the elders were there, right? And Apostle Paul was there. And in his verdict, he gave out four laws from Torah for these Gentiles to follow. Let me say that again. James gave four laws from Torah for the Gentiles to follow. Okay, and let's keep reading because we're not, not done yet. And actually, verse 21 is actually a, a very good as well. So I'm going to start at 20 and then read down. It says, But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and that's a law, and from fornication, that's a law, from things strangled, that's a law, and from blood, that's a law. Verse 21, for Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. All right, I don't know if you picked up on it, but another way of saying that is because Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So James is saying that Moses is being preached in the synagogues every Sabbath day. If you read between the lines, James is saying I, I, we shouldn't have to tell these Gentiles to follow the laws of Moses because Moses is being taught in the synagogues every Sabbath day. All right. But let's keep reading to see if we can confirm this. Right. So let's keep reading. <laughs> so verse 22 says, then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief among the brethren. Verse 23, and they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles, all right, now we're going to read what the letter says. It says, the apostles the elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren which are of the 
Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. All right, let's keep reading. It says, verse 24, it reads, For as much as we have heard that certain went out from us, have troubled you. All right, so let's read that again. It says, For as, for as much as we have heard that certain went out from us, have troubled you. Now, just as a FYI, we did read this in Galatians, and we saw that, I believe it was in Galatians 1. I don't want to lose my place here. Let me, uh, I just want to show you that really quick. So let me go over to Galatians 1. All right, so in Galatians chapter 1, verse, looks like verse 7, it says, uh, and this is where it says, which is not, and this is where they were teaching about the, the gospel. Oh, here, let me read verse 6 and then read it down. It says, um, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, right? So in Galatians, these are the people that were calling them unto another gospel. And then verse 7 said, which is not another, but there be, listen, it says, but there be some that trouble you, right? So the some that were troubling them were preaching another gospel, right? And if we go back over to Acts, verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 15, verse 24 says, For as much as we have heard that certain went out from us have troubled you. So the ones that troubled the apostle Shaul in Galatians 1, verse 6, and that were preaching another gospel was the Pharisees. So we were able to figure out or find out who these people were that were troubling them, troubling the Apostle Paul and the, and the believers there. It was the Pharisees, according to Acts. And here in this part of Acts, he's actually apologizing for these brothers that went out from them to trouble him. Let's read. It says, verse 24 says, For as much as we have heard that certain went, which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. All right. So James is saying, we didn't say that. We didn't tell him to say that, right? We said no such commandment. Now, let's listen to what James says. It says, it seemed good unto us, and this is verse 25, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Verse 26, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have sent therefore Judas Silas, Judas and Silas, and or who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. All right, so they're sending these brothers to also say the same thing that this letter is saying, right? Okay, so verse 28, and this is where it gets good as well. It says, verse 28 says, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Oh, wait a minute. All right. So not only are the apostles uh, giving this message, but now it's the Holy Ghost or the, or the Ruach, right? The Holy Spirit. So it says, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary, notice it says necessary things. And it says, verse 29, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, that's a law, and from blood, that's a law, and from things strangled, that's a law, and from fortification, that's a law, from which if ye, if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. Fare you well. All right. All right. So let's look at what we just read. So note that in verse 28, we see that the Holy Ghost, along with the, you know, the apostles and the and the elders. Right. So you have, you know, just taking a, a quick uh, roll call of who's here in Jerusalem. So you got Peter, you have James, you have Paul. Right. You got Barnabas and you have the elders and we have the Holy Ghost giving these Gentiles 
four commandments of Torah. Okay? You're giving them four commandments of Torah to follow. All right. So, based on these four commandments of Torah that are being given to the Gentiles, are the laws of Torah, or the laws of the Most High, done away with? I'll ask you again. Based on these four laws of Torah that were given to the Gentiles by the Holy Ghost, by the Apostle Paul, by Peter, and by Barnabas, and the elders, are the laws of the Most High done away with? And I believe if, you're, if we're honest, the answer's no, right? The answer's no. All right. So let's go over to Galatians 2. Let's go back over to Galatians 2. And let's pick up where we left off. So we were in uh, Galatians 2. We were at verse 16. And we were um, we took note that the works of the law referred to the doctrine of the Pharisees. And that was based on the book of Acts, right? That was based on Acts. So now that we know what the works of the law is, now we can read and re now we can understand what we read as we progress through the book of Galatians. All right. So let's pick it up. Uh, verse 16. It says this is Galatians 2 verse 16. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Right. Works of the Pharisees, but by the faith of Yahshua HaMashiach. Even we have believed in Yahshua HaMashiach that we might be justified by faith of Yahshua HaMashiach and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Yah forbid. Verse 18. For if I build again, if I, if I sealed, or you can say, or you can think of it as, if, or if I sin again, if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor, or a I make myself a lawbreaker. Transgress means to break the laws of the most high. In verse 19, it says, For I through the law am dead to the law. Right? that I might live unto Yah. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by, I live by the faith of the Son of Yah, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of Yah. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. All right, brothers and sisters. So let's take a brief, a brief uh, recap of what we've learned so far in uh, chapter two of Galatians. All right. So as we go over to switch over to our notes and we notice that at the top of the Galatians, uh, it started off by telling us, that Titus was was um, not compelled to be circumcised, and we discovered that that was relevant because when we read the uh, the same account in the in the book of Acts, we found that the it was the Pharisees that were um, trying to get these believers to be circumcised to be saved. Right, so we see that Galatians and Acts is lining up, but when we read both Galatians and Acts. We now have a greater understanding of what was going on, right? So now you, hopefully you can see that if you just read Galatians by itself, you're really shortchanging yourself because you're only getting half the story and you will be prone to errors if you do it that way, okay? All right, so let's get back to our note. We just said that uh, Titus was not compelled to be circumcised and we also saw in the book of Acts that the Pharisees were trying to compel people to be circumcised to be saved, right? And then it says um, there were men, you know, men had come to spy out their uh, their liberty, and we we uh, looked at looked up uh, liberty in Galatians chapter five to make sure that we were all on the same page that this liberty was not liberty to break the laws of the Most High, and in fact it said use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, 
right? And the and then when it showed us that what the flesh was, the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh was breaking the laws and commandments of the Most High, right? And then as we continue through uh, chapter two, we saw that. Uh, Peter had come to Antioch and him and uh, the Apostle Paul or Shaul had some words and that's because Peter had separated himself and um, the Apostle Paul saw that Peter walked not according to um, the gospel and after they had words the Apostle Paul uh, confronted Peter and he said you know why if thou being a Jew a, Yuh a Yehudi let's see if, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles why com compel us the Gentiles to live as do the Judaizers, right? And so we took note of the word Judaizers, which was not Jews, but it was actually Judaizers. And we did our homework to see what Judaizers were referred to, right? And to do that, we had to go over to Acts uh, to, to get the, uh, the other side of the story to see who the Judaizers were. And so according to Acts, these Judaizers were the Pharisees, right? These Judaizers were the Pharisees because it was the doctrine of the Pharisees that was being discussed in the book of Acts, right? All right, and then um, we also uh, got a better understanding of what it, of the uh, phrase, the works of the law, right? So in the works of the law, in Galatians, when we looked at the account in Acts, Acts didn't use the, the phrase works of the law. Acts actually described the doctrine of the Pharisees, right? So Acts described the doctrine of the Pharisees, but in Galatians, it called it the works of the law, right? So then we put those two together. The works of the law is <laughs> the doctrine of the Pharisees, all right? And uh, let's see here. And of course, the doctrine of the Pharisees, we took a quick note here, was that except you be circumcised in the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved, and, and also follow the commandments of, of uh, Moses to be saved, right? And so what we're saying is that you don't follow the commandments of Moses to be saved. What, what saves you is your faith in Christ, right? What saves you is your faith in Christ. But that doesn't give you an excuse to throw the laws and commandments and the holy days of the Most High to throw those in the trash can, right? So, so hopefully um, you've learned a lot in chapter two. So chapter three is uh, interesting as well, because I, I know that there's a lot of confusion around that. But we'll see how the works of the law also plays a part in chapter three. All right. Well, hey, brothers and sisters, thanks for watching um, as we as we make our way through Galatians. So two chapters down and on to chapter three. All right. Y'all bless. Shalom.